Welcome back to Yesterday Today, bringing you the best of yesterday's radio today. I'm Jake Westbrook, this here's McLean Westbrook, and today... Stop the mic, cut the music, turn off those lights, and what are you doing running the AC for? Whoa, whoa, what's going on? We're, we're recording the show. Yeah. That's not what you're doing, you're costing me more money. What, 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 what do you mean? We're just recording the show like we always do. What do you mean, what do you mean? That's the problem. You record the show, nobody listens, you ain't got sponsors, you even hired a new security guard. What do you need security for, your pansies? To protect you from your shyster lawyer who steals even more of my money? Actually, yeah, that's mostly what we use him for is to throw out Willie. Uh, I, I get the feeling you're dissatisfied with the, the current financial arrangement we have. I'm not dissatisfied, I'm downright unpleased. Ever since I became your producer, all you've been doing is costing me more money. I spend money on your on your microphones and your lights. All of those were here before you got here. I had to sell my leisure suit collection to fund this little shindig you guys got going on here. Well, sir, we never really claimed that this was going to be a huge money-making operation when you decided to uh, take it over. This is This is public radio. Money's not necessarily the goal here. Yeah, but you could have warned me that you two were a couple of clowns. Some bozos with no business sense. So, so you're saying we can't make the show anymore? No, no, no. I'm gonna lock you into the recording studio until you turn a profit. Question. How exactly is locking us in the room gonna generate profits? Have you ever heard of the theory that monkeys at typewriters, given an unlimited amount of time, could eventually bang out the works of Mad Magazine. Uh, I think it's actually Shakespeare, but... Oh, get a load of this kid. Little Timmy over here can read chapter books. Well, I'm just saying, I don't think are it's... You, are you saying you're going to keep us in the studio until we make a show that you think is commercially viable? No, no, no. You see, that's the beauty of it. What's going to happen is these listeners are going to tune in, learn of your plight, Feel sympathy for your two losers, because they can't see your face like I can. And then they'll want to free you from the makeshift prison I've entrapped you in. And they'll do that by giving us money. This seems like a tenuous theory at best. So you're willing to turn this into a hostage situation? Yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. It seems like you're really going to be playing the villain here. Well, according to my ex-wife's divorce lawyer, I've been playing the villain this entire time, so settle in, you losers. I see this as the beginning of a beautiful, well, I wouldn't really call it a friendship, but uh, a uh, kind of a symbiotic to a sort of a leech kind of situation. That's a parasitic thing, actually. Oh, now you're Charles Schultz, renowned evolutionary biologist. I, I, I'm just saying, it seems like a major violation of our rights for you to lock us into a room until we generate a profit. Illegal is the word that jumps to mind. What are you talking about? We're in the entertainment industry. Human rights don't exist. Yeah, we will sort this labor dispute out while we start the show, the theme of which is beating the heat, as it is probably the hottest week of the year so far, so far, this week. Tied for last week, at least. We're going to kick things off with an episode of Ozzy and Harriet, which involves uh, ice cream making. Ozzy and Harriet, of course, is, you know, stereotypical uh, sitcom formula. Probably more well-known as the TV version in the 50s, which I, almost every almost every TV show in the 50s was spun off, of a, spun off of a radio show. But that's a separate topic for another time. This is Ozzy and Harriet from 1953. Some people consider Ozzy and Harriet to be too cheesy, too corny, too sappy. I consider it to be, just like ice cream, a delightful treat. Quit jawing and start making me some roopers, would ya? As we look in on the Nelsons, Harriet's been working all morning making preserves. And now, with shining face and nose to match, she holds up a spoon to Ozzy and says, Taste this, dear, and tell me how you like it. Oh, 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 of course. Well? Well? How do you like that cherry flavor? No, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's apricot. <laughs> oh, uh, well, it, it had a, a slight uh, cherry overtone. What is a slight cherry overtone? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, the, the, when uh, uh, apricots uh, taste like cherries. <laughs> do you like it or don't you? Well, frankly, 
Yeah, that's all I wanted to know. No, no, no. It, it, it's delicious. It's, uh, well, just it's, uh, uh, well, you know what I mean. Yes, I can read between the us. <laughs> I don't know why you go to all the trouble to make jam when you can buy jam that's, that's much better. That, well, well, it's much easier. <laughs> My mother gave me this recipe. Oh, oh, I like the recipe. It's just that the jam is no good. What? <laughs> now, now, don't get me wrong. What, what I meant was that the, the jam is no good, but the recipe is fine. Now, now, wait a minute. I didn't say that. Well, and who did? Well, uh, uh, what I'm... Uh, I, I didn't really... Well, anyway, why knock yourself out? I mean, it's silly to make homemade jam. You can go down to the store. In other words, you hate my jam. No. Hi, Mom. Hi, Pa. Oh, I'm glad to see you, son. <laughs> Would you take this jam for me? With pleasure. That's my boy. Here. How do you like it? Well, like father, like son. <laughs> Mom, a bunch of kids are coming over this afternoon. Have we got enough ice cream for them? I don't know. Look in the refrigerator. Sorry, Mother Hubbard. Your cupboard is bare. <laughs> Hey, there's the ice cream man. Yeah, I'll uh, get you some, Rick. Okay, get a pint of peppermint, a quarter of nut royal, a half a pint of pistachio, a quarter of chocolate chip, a half pint of peach custard, and a pint of cherry delight. Yeah, I, I, I've got a better idea. I'll get a gallon of tutti frutti. You can separate it yourself. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Nelson. Hello, Joe. How many flavors you got? Twenty-four, but you'll take chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry. Well, I guess those are the old standbys. Well, I'll take a half a gallon of vanilla and a half a gallon of chocolate. Okay. Well, this is real homemade stuff. Homemade? Oh, come now, Joe. This isn't homemade. Well, sure it is. Made by our chief chemist, Charlie Holmes. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Usually gets a laugh. Oh, not that it doesn't taste like it's homemade. Oh, now, now, wait a minute, Joe. I don't want to knock your product, but nothing tastes like homemade ice cream. Well, ours does. Joe, you can't compare the creamy, rich, smooth taste of homemade ice cream with this stuff you're selling. Full of hunks of ice, synthetic flavors, cheap gelatin, skim milk, and pieces of cardboard. <laughs> That's what you think of our ice cream. Why do you buy it? <laughs> you're always here waiting for me. Well, yes, I, I, I don't, don't go into your house and drag you. Uh, <laughs> I just saying that yours isn't as good as homemade ice cream. Well, then why don't you make your own ice cream? Well, I go ahead. Well, <laughs> it'd be easy. But just give me your chocolate and the vanilla. I should say not. I'm not telling you anything you don't like. If you're not a satisfied customer, you're not a customer. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Happy cranking. <laughs> Come back in a couple of hours and I'll show you I can make better ice cream. <laughs> Did you get the ice cream, Pop? No, I, I didn't buy it. I, I changed my mind. If you needed some money, I could have loaned you some. <laughs> Don't do it, Pop. He charges too much interest. 28% a day. That's illegal. It doesn't matter. I'm a minor. <laughs> what are we going to do for ice cream? I got a whole bunch of kids coming over here. What happened to the ice cream? Well, Pop didn't get it. Uh, so I, I was out talking to the ice cream man. I got a wonderful idea. Are you going to treat all the kids to the movies? No, I'm going to make real homemade ice cream for you. You've got that old ice cream freezer in the garage. Rick, where are you going? I'm going to call my friends and tell them not to come over. <laughs> Wait a second. Have any of you ever tasted any homemade ice cream? No, but we've tasted homemade jam. <laughs> I'm beginning to get a persecution complex. Tell me one thing. How is it you can be against my making jam at home, but it's all right for you to make ice cream? Well, you can buy good jam at the store, but you can't buy homemade ice cream. You have a cookbook handy? Oh, please, Pa. No, Ricky, this will make you the most popular kid around here. Couldn't he just learn to play the piano or something? <laughs> Believe me, your friends will just love this, Rick. Here's a cookbook. All right. Let's see here. Ice box cake. Icing. Ice cream. Oh, here we are. Oh, look at all the different kinds. Uh, what flavor would you like? Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we need some rock salt, first of all. We got some in the basement we used on the sidewalk that time. It got icy. I'll get it for you. 
Well, let's say we need cream. I'll get it for you. And uh, I'll get the freezer. Well, Harriet, this is becoming a family project. Yes, it is. I'll get the mop. <laughs> What are you looking for, Oz? Oh, hi, Thorny. Looking for our old ice cream freezer. Oh, gonna make ice cream, huh? Yeah. I wondered why Harriet was putting newspapers down on the kitchen floor. Well, she's always a little nervous when I'm in the kitchen. Yeah, I remember she put newspapers down that time you showed her how to bake a cake. <laughs> yeah. Should have put them on the ceiling, too. <laughs> how come you're making ice cream? Well, I had a little argument with uh, Joe, you know, the, the ice cream man. Uh, wouldn't drop his price for you, huh? No, no. <laughs> Would you believe he had the nerve to tell me his stuff was better than homemade ice cream? Heavens to Bessie, how dare he? <laughs> Cut it out. I doubt if he's ever tasted the real stuff. Uh, you had it when you were a kid, didn't you? Oh, sure. We used to make some practically every Sunday. Oh, there's nothing like it, was there, Thorny? The way the stuff used to melt in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well... Off to the kitchen. Uh, Oz, old friend, do you need any help? Glad to have you aboard, Thorny. Well, the kitchen's all ready for you, Chef Barney. <laughs> now, there's no reason. Hey, how did you get those newspapers on the ceiling? Scotch tape. <laughs> I see you've got a partner for your crime. Yes, sir. When old Oz started talking about making old-fashioned ice cream, that was enough for me. Oh, well, there's the cookbook and all the things you need. If you want me, you'll find me cringing in the cellar. <laughs> okay, boy, let's get to work. What's the first thing we do? Well, let me see what it says here. Three cups of cream. Use cream that is 24 hours old. Makes a finer grain than fresh cream. Okay, what's the next step? We've got to add sugar, salt, more cream. It looks okay to me, but you sure spilled a lot on the drain board. Oh, uh, uh, mop it up, will you, Tony? I don't know what you'd do without me. <laughs> now I'll get the freezer. No, 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 don't wring the dish rag out into the ice cream, Tony. <laughs> I just didn't want to waste all this good stuff. <laughs> now, now we pour it into the freezer and put the ice in. Yeah, well, hold it. Does the ice cream go into the can on the inside and the ice on the outside? Or does the ice cream go on the outside and the ice on the inside? <laughs> That's a, a, a pretty good question. Let's figure this out logically. Well, now, wait a minute. The ice must go in the can on the inside. The inside. Otherwise, it would melt too fast, huh? Y yes, I... No, I remember distinctly. I always licked out the inside can, never the outside. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's play it safe, huh? Pour half on the inside and half on the outside. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've got to take a chance one way or the other, and I'm sure it goes on the inside. Okay, you're the brain. Pour it in. It looks a little lumpy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I left the spoon in. <laughs> Uh, can you fish it out there? I'll try. Yeah, I got it. Uh, where's the towel? Right in back of you. There we are. Let me just see how it tastes. No, no, no. We don't taste it until it's ready. Now what? Well, we put the lid on and you pour the ice in. Hey, look out. What's the matter? You're getting it all over the floor. Here, I'll do it. Honestly, Tony, you're a vivid example of the old adage, if you want a thing done right, you've got to do it yourself. Oh, now, really? Uh, 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 hand me the rock salt, would you please? There you are. Now what? Now all we have to do is crank it. Uh, all we have to do is crank it? <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, you're helping me. Oz, I refer you to your statement of a moment ago. If you want a thing done right, do it yourself. <laughs> Now, as we rejoin the Nelsons, the ice cream freezer is in full operation on the back porch. You hear that rusty creaking? Those are Ozzy's muscles. <laughs> the ice cream freezer is well oiled. Thorny! Thorny! David! David! <laughs> Hi, <Ed. laughs> 
Pop. How's the ice cream coming along? Oh, fine. I figured out, son, there's an art to turning the handle on an ice cream freezer. Really? Oh, oh, yes, yes. You see, you can't turn it too fast. You can't turn it too slow. Hmm. I don't know whether you could do it or not. However, I, I might let you try it. Hey, Pop, you just reminded me of something. What's that? I gotta take my copy of Tom Sawyer back to the library. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll see you later, Huck. Of jars on the shelf. The jam will cool better out there on the back porch. Okay, Mom. Oh, careful. Don't kick over the ice cream freezer. Where's Pop? Look out by our elm tree. See that big lumpy root on the ground? Yeah. That's your father. <laughs> Not asleep, huh? Yep, he's all cranked out. Hey, Mom, I wonder how the ice cream is. Yeah, I've been wondering that, too. Why don't we try it? I'll get the lid off. Hmm. Has kind of an unhealthy pallor, hasn't it? And like old shaving cream. I'll try. Poor beauty. <laughs> I must admit, I admire your courage. Here's a spoon. Well, here goes. How is it? You taste it. <laughs> hmm. I agree with you wholeheartedly. What flavor is it supposed to be? My guess is vanilla. Are you sure? Well, there's the cap of the vanilla bottle floating between those two lumps. <laughs> okay, let's give it another try. Wait a minute, Mom. Here comes a boy with an unbiased opinion. He'll eat anything. Oh, the ice cream. Oh, here, Ricky. Taste it. Give me a spoon. Well... It ain't great. <laughs> it isn't great. You ain't kidding. <laughs> I can't give this stuff to my friends. Yeah, it is pretty bad, even for those monsters. Look who's talking. Half of your friends are girls. <laughs> All right, that's enough, fellas. What are we going to do about the ice cream? We'll have to go down to the market and buy some. Pop isn't going to like this. Not if he tastes it. I mean, he won't like us to buy store ice cream after he's gone all the trouble to make this. Yeah, he did put in a lot of hard work. Mom, how would it be if we bought the ice cream, dumped this stuff out, and put the good stuff in? Hey, yeah, Pop wouldn't know the difference, and everybody would be happy, especially me. <laughs> now, that's not exactly fair. Let's give it another try, see if it tastes any better. Here, take another taste, Ricky. David? Now you try, Mom. David, back out your car. <laughs> Here it is, Mom. A gallon of vanilla. Oh, fine. I... Uh-oh. Look who just came in. Pop. You boys take the ice cream and head up the bakery aisle, cut through the canned soups, and I'll head him off in front of the frozen vegetables. <laughs> We're on our way. Hi, ho, vanilla. I beg your... Uh, Harriet. Well, for goodness sake, fancy meeting you here. Well, what are you doing here? Well, this is a market and I'm marketing. What are you doing here? Well, I woke up and found you were gone and I decided to take a little walk. So I got in the car and here I am. <laughs> what are you going to buy? No. Uh, what are you going to buy? Oh. Well, it's a nice thing you did. I'll no, 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 wait a minute. Harriet, sometimes I just don't understand you. Well, I hope not. I'll see you at home. Well, I hope not. That's a silly answer. It's all done, Mom. I put the stuff we bought in the ice cream freezer. What did you do with your father's ice cream? We poured it into a big bowl and put it in the refrigerator. Oh, no. Your father's sure to find it there. Use the gallon container the store ice cream was in, and I'll get rid of it tomorrow. Hi, Oswald. 
pal, old friend, old buddy. Hello, old rat. <laughs> What's the matter? As soon as the hard work started, you disappeared. I'm sorry, Oz. I had to go home. I was expecting a long-distance call. From home? I didn't know. That's why I had to go home. <laughs> Pretty flimsy excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Well, how's it taste, Oz? Do you want my expert opinion? Absolutely not. You ducked out at the crucial moment. You're not entitled to any. Well, do you mind if I watch? Well, okay, but stand back. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. Just like Mother used to make doesn't look like homemade ice cream to me. Well, you just taste it. Here. No, no, no. I was derelict in my duty, and I'm not entitled to any. Oh, go ahead and taste it. Okay, but remember, you forced me. <laughs> hmm. How is it? How is it? It's all right. Oh, take some more. Here, here's a bigger spoon. Well, thanks. Yes, sir. That's mighty, um... Mighty what? Uh, you mind if I take another taste? No, 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 no. Here's a couple of bowls. Let's give this a good, fair try. Oh. Help yourself to another bowl, Thorny. No, no, thanks, Oz. But I gotta hand it to you. It's terrific. Oh. <laughs> I gotta agree with you. <laughs> well, let's put the lid back on. Oh. Hey, what happened to all the ice cream? I guess we tasted it all away. <laughs> I can't believe it. Gee, I, I made this for the kids. Well, Oz, we had to find out if it was all right for them to eat. Yes, but we ate it all. And I think it's all right for them to eat. <laughs> Gee, after I gave them this big buildup about homemade ice cream. Oh, I feel awful. Maybe you can whip up another batch. Oh, I haven't time. I got it. Use the ice cream that Harriet bought. What ice cream? Well, I saw her take a gallon container of it into the house a little while ago. Really? Let me look. Well, yes, there it is. So that's what she was doing at the store. She had no confidence in me. Well, in past performance, I can't blame her. But why not take advantage of her foresight and dump that store stuff in the ice cream freezer? It'll never taste the same, Tony. Kids won't know the difference. Tell them it's homemade and they'll love her. Gee, I hate to practice deception. Oz, old man, you're well past the practice stage. <laughs> like Ricky's friends are having a good time in there. Yeah, I noticed the ice cream freezer is pretty well cleaned out. Mm -hmm. The boys really seem to love it. Uh, did you taste my ice cream? Yes, sir. Did you notice its distinctive taste? I sure did. <laughs> well, Harriet, I'm going to tell you a little secret. That ice cream in the freezer isn't mine. <laughs> I know, dear. So you... Who told you? Thorny? No, I'm going to tell you a little secret. The boys and I tasted your ice cream while you were napping, and, well, you remember what you said about my jam? Yes. Well, that goes double for your homemade ice cream. <laughs> now, how can that be? I tasted it myself, and it was delicious. Of course. That was the ice cream I bought at the market. We switched. Well, now, you, you mean? Yep. Well, what did you do with the ice cream I made? Put it back in the store container and stuck it in the refrigerator. Carried. Okay. Right, I emptied that container back into the freezer. You mean the boys are eating your homemade ice cream now? Yeah. Can you have some more ice cream? Oh, why, sure, son. Help yourself. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, thanks. I got some more, fellas. Well, so my ice cream wasn't any good, huh? Well. The kids like it. They're coming back for seconds. Proof of the pudding is in the eating, isn't it? Maybe they think it's pudding. <laughs> <laughs> they know it's ice cream. My homemade ice cream. Oh, hi, son. Uh, more ice cream? Oh, thanks. More jam. More jam? You mean my homemade jam? Sure. Kills the taste of the ice cream. <laughs> Help yourself, son. <laughs> yep, you're right. That's your homemade ice cream out there. And it's my homemade jam that they like. The same jam that you said was so awful. Uh, well, uh, not exactly. What do you mean? Well, while you were at the market, I woke up and tasted some of your homemade jam. And all I could say was, well, I couldn't say anything. My teeth were stuck together. <laughs> so I rushed right down to the market. 
Ozzy, you mean you bought this jam and threw mine out? Exactly. <laughs> That's a pretty low-down, sneaky trick. But it was all right for you to switch my ice cream. I did it as a matter of public health. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I switched your jam. Well, I'll make a deal with you. If you won't make any more ice cream, I won't make any more jam. You know something? If I could lift my arm, I'd shake hands with you. <laughs> What kind of ice cream should I get? I'll get strawberry this time. And you better apologize to Joe. Oh, Joe! Hey, Joe! Yes, Mr. Nelson? Uh, Joe, I want to apologize to you for what I said about your ice cream. I'm really very sorry. If you don't mind, I'd like to buy a quart of vanilla. I won't sell it to you. <laughs> Why not? I apologized, didn't I? Yeah, but after our argument, I went home and told my wife about it. She made some homemade ice cream and... Well, you're right. It is better than the stuff I sell. <laughs> But Joe... Mr. Nelson, I can't go on living a lie. As soon as I get rid of all the junk in the truck, I'm going to the frozen vegetable business. Bye, Mr. Nelson. Welcome back to Yesterday Today. It appears our producer, uh, before that episode played, his, his plan to lock us in the room until uh, a sufficient amount of money is generated from this show. He was completely serious about that. He has, in fact locked us in here and well he's locked himself in here with us i'm not sure how so are you, are you gonna like leave at night to get food and stuff or what's what's the plan here i live for the money I just, and you haven't made me any i just don't understand why we can't also have the ac on in here it's 90 degrees outside and 100 degrees inside right now it builds character and saves me a little dough yeah and you know what we're already 30 minutes into this program and you guys still haven't made me a single buck. So I've decided that from now on, I choose the programming. I, uh, ooh, okay. What did you have in mind? What kind of degenerate programming are you going to play? Let me tell you about a mythical land. Oh, no. From the stories uh, told from the dawn of time. A place where it's always sunny. Riverdale. What? Home of that lovable all-American boy, Archibald Andrews. We, we just played an episode of Archie Andrews like two or three weeks ago. It's a little soon to play it again. And you know what? It was my favorite program you boys have ever played. I'd actually like to thank you for introducing me to Archibald's wacky yet somehow relatable misadventures. Have you been drinking the hand sanitizer again? Well, I forgot to bring food that is here in Avention, so uh, I had to get a little creative. I'm just saying the alcohol content in that stuff is not as high as you think it is. Well, not as high as I am on this uh, Jughead character. You know he's best friends with that Archibald. Yeah, I know. You know what, I'll make you a deal. I'll play an episode of uh, Archie Andrews if you let me, you know, call the police for a couple minutes. Just... Just, you know, not about anything specific. Just, you know, just just a chat with them. Yeah, we should check in and see how they're doing. Well, sure, I don't see why you guys couldn't make a phone call to the... Wait a second, you guys are trying to pull one over on me. Ah, uh, you got us. I respect that, I really do. Yeah, we were trying to escape this, uh, trap of death you have us in. <laughs> well, you know what can uh, I yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, but like... What about when people hear the show? Aren't they going to call the police, too? I mean, sooner or later, someone's calling somebody about this. I respect the uh, ego that you'd have to have on yourself to reasonably believe that anybody would listen to this. And to be honest, I've been looking at the profit margins and the ratings and, uh... Oh boy, I think you need an ego check, my friend. Yes, that ain't it, is, uh, anybody out there? Hello, anybody alive out there? Isn't the purpose supposed to be to get people to listen to this? Hey, you don't tell me how to run a radio program, and I won't tell you how to run a circus, you little clown boy. All right, all right, all right, I'll play Archie Andrews, but come on, can't we just talk this out? Archibald. Archibald, all right. Now for our weekly visit to Riverdale. It's a sunny Saturday morning as we look in on the Andrews' home, and we find Mrs. Andrews working in the kitchen. In the good old summertime, 
in the good old summer time. Phew. Oh, what a day. Oh, hello, dear. Uh, What'd you say? I said, what a day. What's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Yes, what's wrong with it? Mary, have you by any chance taken a look at the thermometer right outside this window? Well, no, I haven't. Why? Because, Mary, this is the first time I ever saw a thermometer perspire. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me it's hot? Mary, do I have to tell you it's hot? Can't you feel it? Well, as a matter of fact, dear, I've been so busy working around the kitchen, I haven't had time to notice the heat. But it happens to be 90 degrees in the shade. What do you mean you haven't noticed it? Fred, don't be silly. Everybody knows that the heat is always worse if you sit around worrying about it. The only thing to do is ignore it. But, Mary, how do you ignore 90 degrees? I might ignore the first 60 or 70 of them, but the last 20 get me. Fred, well, I you think... You could fry so. eggs on the sidewalk today. Yes, dear. And an hour out in that sun, you'd have a sunstroke. Yes, dear. And it's then still morning. Go. What's it going to be like this afternoon? Oh, my. Fred Andrews, instead of standing there and complaining about the heat as though you were in a tropical jungle someplace, why don't you do something about it? Do? Mary, uh, what do you suggest I do? Well, go sit on the porch. Sit on the porch? Yes, dear. There's always a nice breeze out there, and with the awning down and a nice, comfortable rocking chair to sit in, well, you can be as comfortable out there as any place in town. Oh, well, maybe you're right, dear. Maybe you're right. I'll try it. But I have to get mm. this kitchen straightened out, heat or no heat. Yes, dear, but I don't know where you get the energy to work on a day like this. Oh, oh. I've never in all my days seen a summer as hot as this one. 90 degrees at this time of the day. Why, it's unheard of. It's... Oh, oh. there is a little breeze out here at that. <sighs> well, maybe Mary was right. If I just sit still in this rocking chair, I might be able to stay cool. Oh, oh, this heat sure knocks me out. Ah. Oh, that's a little better anyway. I can almost breathe now. In the good I, old summertime! Oh, in the good fine. old summertime! Gee, hiya, Dad, how's the boy? Hello, Archie. I'm Swell day, isn't it, Dad? Swell day, Oh, this Archie, is about the I... best summer we've ever had. Archie, yes, sir, I... nothing like a little sunshine to make a fella feel good. Archie, <laughs> you may call this a little sunshine that makes you feel good, but I'm confounded hot, do you mind? Well, gee whiz, Dad, what's there to be so hot about? What's there to be hot about? Archie, aren't you hot? Well, I'm a little warm, but not hot. In fact, soon as I get my glove, Jug and I are going out to play baseball. Play baseball on a day like this? Uh-huh. Archie, do you mean to say that you're actually going to stand out in some hot, dusty field right in the blazing sun and run around after a baseball on a day like this? Sure, Dad. Why not? Because it's night. Because you'll get sun. Because only mad dogs... Because... Oh, oh never mind, Archie. I... I'm starting to perspire all over again just thinking about your playing baseball. Gee whiz, Dad, you know what you need? Yes, a trip to Alaska. No, seriously, Dad, if you're hot, what you ought to do is go in the kitchen and make yourself a nice glass of ice-cold lemonade. Archie, never mind. Hmm? Did you say ice-cold lemonade? Uh-huh, with lots of ice. That'll cool you off. <laughs> Archie, you know you may have something there. Sure, I just had some down at the drugstore, Dad, and it was swell. Well, I gotta get my glove. Call me if Jughead gets here, will you, Dad? Yes, Archie, I will. Yeah. Ice cold lemonade. Yes, sir, that's just exactly what I need. <clears throat> oh, Mary! Oh, Mary! Yes? Could you come out here for a minute, dear? Now, I'm very busy, dear. Oh, yes, dear, I know, I know. And I wouldn't bother you, but it's very important. Yes. Mm. Uh, would you mind making me a nice big glass of ice-cold lemonade? Lemonade? But, Fred, I'm so busy. No, I'd come in and make it myself, dear, but I, I don't want to get in your way. But, Fred, just I just... make it nice and sour and put lots of ice in it. Fred, in fact, I... just fill the glass with ice, then just pour a little lemonade over it. Fred, are you through daydreaming now? Yes, dear, I'm... Daydreaming? Who, who's daydreaming? You are. I'm defrosting the refrigerator, and we haven't a drop of ice in the house. Oh, good. For a minute, I was afraid you... There's no ice! <laughs> oh, Mary, Mary, you're fooling. Fred, I'm not. Oh, great. Mary, is this any day to be without ice? Well, Fred, how did I know you'd be wanting cold lemonade? And besides, that refrigerator needed defrosting. But, but Mary, I... will put it on, and you'll have some ice in half an hour, dear. Half an hour? Oh, that's fine. I'll probably be dead of the heat in two minutes. 
My wife says she'll have some ice in half an hour. Well, Dad, oh, how's I the just... lemonade? Archie, Good, huh? Archie, Bet you feel Archie, cooler already. Archie, I told I... you there's nothing like a nice big glass of ice cold lemonade on a day like this. Archie, it so happens I haven't even had a smell of a glass of lemonade. Gee whiz, Dad, lemonade doesn't smell. <laughs> Archie, I know that. What I mean is that I haven't had any lemonade at all. It seems your mother is defrosting the refrigerator and we have no ice. Oh, gee whiz, that's too bad. Yes, Archie, and I... Hey, that gives me an idea. So long, Dad. Archie, come back here. Me, Dad? Yes, you. Oh. Archie, you run next door to Betty's and borrow a tray of ice cubes. But, Dad, Jughead's calling for me any minute and we're going to play baseball. Archie! And I just... I... Yes, Dad. Archie, have you seen this morning's paper? Yes, Dad. Did you happen to read the story of how nine people collapsed of heat prostration this week? Yes, Dad. You want that to ha happen to me? Yes, Dad. Did no! <laughs> I mean, no, Dad. <laughs> All right. Then go over to Betty's and get some ice cubes and stop arguing. Okay, Dad. Okay, I'm going. But if Jughead gets here, tell him to wait. Yes, Archie. And, and don't be all day about it. I won't, Dad. Oh, I won't, Dad. Oh, that boy. Getting him to do something is just like... Hello! Hello! <laughs> Oh. Oh. Jughead. Who'd you expect? The good humor man? <laughs> no, Jughead, I did not expect the good humor man. And I, I did not expect you to come sneaking up in back of me either. Where'd you come from, anyway? Well, I came around that side of the house. Why? That's the shady side. Oh, fine. Well, I'm glad you've got sense enough to stay out of the sun anyway. Sure I have. It's an awful hot day today. Yes. Hottest Jughead. day I've ever seen. Yes, hottest Jughead. day in ten years, I Jug, bet you. I don't it's going to get hotter, to... too. All right, Jughead, so it's going to get hotter. <laughs> you certainly don't make me feel any cooler talking about it. I don't? No, you don't. Now, just be quiet before I suffer a case of heat prostration. Gee, my Uncle Herman had a case of heat prostration last week. He did? Uh-huh. He even went to the doctor. Well, what'd the doctor do? He told my Uncle Herman to try salt. Salt? Table salt? Uh-huh. The doctor said that's the best thing on a hot day. Well, I've heard of that. Did it help your uncle? Nope. And we poured half a box over him. <laughs> oh, great. Jughead, your Uncle Herman didn't really let you pour salt all over him, did he? Sure. What'd you expect him to do, eat it? <laughs> Jughead, look... Let's just forget your Uncle Herman. I, I'm too hot to even talk. Gee, I know what you need, Mr. Andrews. A fan. Yes, Jug. I, a what? A fan. An electric fan. Jughead, you know something? That's a good idea. I get lots of good ideas. Well, we won't argue that right now. <laughs> but an electric fan out here in the porch to stir up the breeze might be just what the doctor ordered. Oh, no. The doctor ordered so. <laughs> Jughead, this is a different doctor and be quiet. Oh, okay. Now, where am I going to get a fan? Ours went out of order two years ago, and I never did get a new one. I got one. Yeah? Uh -huh, I have well, home. Jughead, that's great. That's swell. In fact, that's wonderful. Well, Jug, you don't mind running home and getting the fan as a favor to me, do you? Yep. But, Jughead, you only live a few blocks from here. I know, but, Mr. Andrews, it's so hot. Oh, fine. Jughead, look, if you'll go home and bring that fan back here, I'll give you a quarter. Nope. I'll give you four nickels. It's a deal. You, oh, oh, fine. <laughs> All right, Jug. You go get the fan, and I'll give you the money. Okay, Mr. Andrews, but tell Archie I'll be right back. Oh, boy, four nickels. Oh, that jughead. A quarter isn't enough, but four nickels is oh, all Dad, right. Oh, Dad, Dad, quick, take it, take it. Archie, for <laughs> Pete's sake, where'd you get that big chunk of ice? Well, oh, Betty wasn't home, so I went to the Jenkins, and they have an ice box, and they gave me this chunk of ice, and boy, is it cold. Take it, quick. Now, Archie, don't <laughs> hand it to the... Yeah. No! Oh, that's freezing, Archie. Take it, take it back. Dad, wait till my hands are warm. <laughs> don't I? Oh, boy, boy, Dad, take it back. <laughs> Oh, here. Mom, quick, quick. Take this ice from me. Yeah, I don't want it. It's cold. It's cold. Don't you bring it back. Not me. Fred, you take Mary, it. No, no. It's cold. Oh, that's cold. Here, <laughs> Archie, you take it. Dad, no. Put it on the... Oh, boy. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> Archie. <laughs> Archie. <laughs> I told you to get ice cubes, not a cake of ice. Well, yes, but Archie. Put them down. You're dropping it. What? <laughs> oh. Well, we got ice cubes now. <laughs> Oh, good grief. Just look at that. My ice. Your ice? Fred, what about my porch? Your porch? Mary, who wants to drink your porch? <laughs> Nobody wants to drink it, but just look at the mess that melting ice is making. Archie, how could you drop the ice? It was easy. Oh. <laughs> Mary, never mind the little melted ice now. Better get a pot or something to pick up the pieces before it all melts. All right, dear, but I do have other things to do, you know. Oh, fine thing. 
Just look at that ice splattered all over the place. Gee, I'm sorry, well, Dad, but I couldn't help it. My hands were so cold and the ice was so slippery. Hello, it just... Archie. Oh, gee whiz, Betty. Oh, fine. Hello, Mr. Andrews. Hello, Betty. How are you, Archie? Oh, fine, Ooh, Betty. Isn't this the hottest day you ever saw? Well, I don't I bet it's over 100. Well, I I've should... never been so hot in all my life. Well, neither do you I... look nice and cool. Well, I feel pretty... Golly, nice. what's that all over the porch? Oh, that's... Ice. A... Golly, how did ice get there on a day like this? Oh, well, you see... Golly, I'm... Archie, well, you're not well, talking very much today. Something wrong? Oh, fine. No, Betty, nothing's wrong. If you'll let me explain... Well, I've been standing here for ten minutes now, but you haven't said a word. Betty, if you'll just shut... I mean, if you'll be quiet for a minute, I'll say a word. Two words, in fact. Oh, okay. 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 No, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. That could go on all day. Betty, what Archie's trying to tell you is that I was hot and I wanted some cold lemonade. Cold lemonade? Oh, God, I... Okay. And Archie went to your house to borrow some ice cubes. But I wasn't home. Yeah, that's right. So he went to Mrs. Jenkins and got a big chunk of ice and dropped it and broke it. And that's how the ice got all over the porch. Now are you happy? Oh, I was happy before that. Oh, I... But golly, Mr. Andrews, I know a better way to keep cool than drinking lemonade. Yes, I know, but... You do? Mm-hmm. What is it? Turn the sprinkler on. The sprinkler? Mm-hmm. That's what my father always does on a hot day. Gets the garden hose out and puts the lawn sprinkler on full force. Mm. And that fine spray in the air cools off the whole house. Now, oh, by George, you might have something there. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. It certainly does. <laughs> but we don't have a lawn sprinkler. Oh, you could use ours, Mr. Andrews. We could run the hose right across our lawn to your lawn. Betty, that's wonderful. Archie, you go over and help Betty drag the hose over here. But, Dad, I'm waiting for Jughead. Oh, I forgot to tell you. He was here a few minutes ago. He was? Oh, gee, was where'd he go? Well, he had to run home for uh, something. But he'll be back in a minute. Now, now, you two go ahead. You and Betty get that sprinkler turned on, please, before I melt away. Will you? Okay, come on, Betty. Oh. All right, Archie. I think it's all connected and everything. Oh, sprinklers. Now, why didn't I think of that before? I the, yeah. Put all the ice right in here. Huh? Fred Andrews, haven't you picked up any of that ice? Well, oh, good grief. I forgot all about it. Oh, for pity's sake. Fred, I thought oh. you wanted the ice for lemonade. Oh, well, I, I did, dear. I did. But it doesn't matter now. Betty was just here with a wonderful suggestion. The lawn sprinkler. Sprinkler? Yes, sir. She and Archie are setting the lawn sprinkler up on the front lawn. And when we get that going, the spray will cool off the whole place. Then you don't want the ice? <laughs> Not now I don't. Oh, for pity's sake. Get everyone excited about ice, and then you don't want ice. Fred Andrews, I wish you'd make up your mind. Mary, I did make up my mind, but how can I want ice that's all melted? How? I don't know how. Oh, <laughs> oh good grief. Jughead, where did you come from this time? My house, remember? Remember? Oh, you mean the fan I sent you for? Uh-huh, here it is. <laughs> Jughead, is that a fan? Yep. But the blades are all battered and bent, and the guardrail has gone off of it. Whatever happened to it? Well, last winter I got an idea to put wings on it and make an electric airplane. And? It worked. Oh, fine. It crashed right through the window. Boy, what a plane I was. Jughead! Never mind your inventions. What I want to know is, does it still work as a fan? Oh, sure. I think. I just be careful of the blades. It's a little dangerous without the guardrails around. Yes, Dad, I'll be careful. Here, I'll hold the fan. Now, you go and plug it in. There's a socket right the other side of the door. Okay, I got it. No, oh, good. Now, I'll snap the switch. Uh, Jug, I turned the switch on, but nothing happened. Oh, it will, Mr. Andrews. Just give it time. There, it's going now. How can you tell? Can't you hear it? Jughead, I can not only hear it, I can count the number of times the blades go around in a minute. <laughs> well, <laughs> it is a little slow, isn't it? You're like everything in your family. Huh? No, nothing, Jug, nothing. <laughs> now, turn it off. Turn it off? You mean you aren't going to use it? Jug, After I, I went all the way home for Jug, it, I then you make that whole Jughead, thing Jughead, look! I'll still give you the four nickels, I promise you, but there's no sense running a fan that'll hardly turn. It's not the money, it's the principle of the thing. There's nothing wrong with that fan. I think you ought to use it. Oh, me. Look, Jughead, you take this fan down to my workshop or in the basement and see if you can find a loose wire or something. Now, if you can fix it, I'll use it. But otherwise, it's just a waste of electricity. Okay. I'll fix it and you'll see. Yes. You'll see. Yes, Jug, I'll see. Oh, how do I get into these things? Hey, I Dad, don't know. Hey, Dad, here's I... the sprinkler. <laughs> Where do you want it? Oh, good. Put it right in the center of the lawn, Archie. Near the walk. Okay. <sighs> How's that? Oh, fine. Now, turn it on, full force. Okay, Dad. Hey, Betty, turn it on! Well, 
Uh, maybe not. Well, things will cool off around here. Oh, I... Mr. Andrews. No. Oh, Mr. Sherry. Hello. Is it hot enough for you, Mr. Andrews? <laughs> yes, Mr. Sherry. Uh, come on up here on the porch. Oh, I can't stay, Mr. Andrews. Got to do some shopping for my wife. Yeah, but don't stand there, Mr. Sherry. They're going to turn the sprinkler on. Uh, what sprinkler? That sprinkler. Well, hey, I'm getting wet. Well, I, I tried to tell you, Mr. Sherry, but... Here, I just stopped by to say hello and give you these Swift's premium franks and the handy one-pound package wrapped in cellophane for your convenience and protection. And what happens? You get wet. But I... Don't you want to hear about those plump, delicious franks made of all dinner-quality meats? Yes, but I... Okay, Mr. Andrews, listen to this. Swift's premium franks come in the new sanitary flavor saver pack that seals in all the natural goodness of those wonderful franks. Imagine, eight to ten of the juiciest, most flavorful franks you ever tasted, wrapped in a cellophane package to ensure extra freshness. And here I was delivering to you these delightful Swift's premium franks, made of tender beef and juicy pork, skillfully blended into each wonderful frank, and then you turn the hose on me. Yes, but Just I... Just think what you're getting, Mr. Andrews. Swift's premium franks, the franks that are made fresh daily in Swift kitchens from coast to coast. So that wherever or whenever you buy them, you know they're fresh. Uh, Mr. Sherry, look, I like Swift's premium franks, and I like you, and I apologize for getting you wet. But for Pete's sake, don't just stand there in that sprinkler. Don't stand in it. Mr. Andrews, don't be silly. This is the first time I've been cool all day. Huh? Thanks for the shower. Well, see you later, Mr. Andrews. Well, I'll be darned. And all the time I thought he was mad about that water. Well, how's that, Dad? Know. Good, huh? Uh, yes, Archie, fine. Now I'll go back and turn it off. Turn it off? Dad, I thought you said you wanted the spray. Yeah, I did, but you two just got Mr. Sherry soaking wet. Oh, we did? Yes, and while he didn't mind, the next person might. So just turn it off before we get into trouble. Golly, okay, Mr. Andrews. I'll go turn it off, but I wish you'd Ooh. decide whether you want the sprinkler or not. Yeah, Dad, after all the work we went to, I think... Yes, the... Archie, I, I, I know I... you went to a lot of work, and I'm sorry, son. Believe me, I did want it on. Because if I don't cool off soon, I'll boil over. But that sprinkler is just too dangerous to leave on, that's all. I okay, think... Dad. Betty's got it off. Now, if Jughead would just get back here, we could go play oh, some... Oh, I forgot to tell you, Archie. Jughead is here. Well, that... Is here? Where? Downstairs in the basement, fixing an old fan. Gee whiz, Dad, why didn't you tell me? I've been oh, waiting for Jughead. Oh, Archie. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, great. Hi, old Archiekin. <laughs> I'm awful glad to see y'all, Archie. Dear. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Andrew. Why, you look all hot. Uh, Veronica, I all am hot. I've been trying to cool off with fans and cold lemonade and sprinklers and whatnot, but it doesn't seem to do me the least bit of good. Oh, my goodness. Why don't you do what my father does on a hot day like this? What's that? He gets himself a bucket of cold water and sits with his feet in it. Keeps his feet in a bucket of cold water? Uh-huh. He says that'll keep him cool even if the temperature were 150. Well, now, why didn't I think of that? Well, that's the best suggestion yet. Yes, sir. Oh, gee whiz, Dad, you don't want me to go get a bucket of water now, do you? No, Archie, I certainly do not. Huh? Every time I've sent you for something, I've had trouble. This time, I'm going to get something myself. Yes, sir, a nice big bucket of ice cold water, just exactly what I need. Well, I'm glad that's one thing I don't have to do. Boy, I've been chasing around for an hour. Oh, have you really, Archie? Uh-huh. But now I can talk to you until Jughead gets here. <laughs> Hello. I had opened my big mouth. Hello, Jug. Hi. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Jug. Well, did you get the fan fixed? Well, not exactly, but I found out how to make it work. There's a loose wire inside, and when it stands up straight, it doesn't go. But when you lay it down on its back, it goes like crazy. Well, Jug, that's very interesting, but I... You want to see? Well, not right now, Jug. Yeah, hold the fan. I'll go plug it in on the other side of the door. Oh, me. All right, Jug, but hurry up. Okay, this will just take a second. Oh, that Jug had sometimes... Well, I got the bucket of water. It's Jerry. Uh, Dad, look out for that wire. Dad, look out! No, look... Very funny. Very funny. Fred, what Veronica, so, Mary, I don't know. I came out here with this bucket and somebody tripped me. Oh, gee whiz, Dad, nobody tripped you. You tripped over the wire. What wire? Wire to my fan. See? see? Oh, great. Jughead, have you still got that broken down thing here? Sure. All you gotta do is lay it down and it works. Oh, that's fine, but get it out of here. Okay, okay. I'll uh, put it down on this chair. Yes, but be sure you just. Oh, Fred, never mind, Jughead. Now, did you hurt yourself when you fell? Yes, I did, Mary. I. Wrenched my back and it hurts like the dickens. Oh and dear, I... Fred, I'm going to call the doctor. The doc? Oh, 
out our marriage now just for a little bruise. Fred, I... a back injury can be serious. We might as well have the doctor look at it. But, Mary, I tell you... Oh, me, what's the use? All I want to do is keep cool, and the more Holly, I... Holly, what's going on? Oh, hello, Betty. My father just fell and hurt his back. Oh, and we... Veronica, you're here. Well, anything wrong with that, Miss Cooper? Now, Don't Veronica, you the... Miss Cooper me, Miss Lodge. And, now, and just... why not? Now, Veronica, Because I just... I'll slap your face, that's why. Oh, just you... Just a minute, wouldn't... just a minute. I absolutely have had enough trouble around here today without you two girls getting into a fight. You hear me? Well, she started it. I don't care who started it. Uh, Betty, you stay right where you are, and Veronica... You sit down in that chair. Mr. Andrews! I want no more nonsense around here of any kind. Mr. Andrews! I'll have some peace and quiet or know the reason why. Mr. Andrews! And Jughead, you be quiet too. <laughs> Veronica, I said sit down in that chair. Yes, Mr. Andrews, but I... Ah! <laughs> it me! It me! Veronica, what bit you? There's something in that chair! Veronica, oh, please don't... She sat on the fan. I might... I... Best Jughead, will you please... Oh, it serves her right. Oh, Betty, I... Not place to leave him. That's better. Now listen to me, all of you. This nonsense has gone far enough. Too far, in fact. So has my fan. <laughs> I said be quiet. Okay, okay. Okay. Now all I want to know is why, when the temperature is 90 degrees in the shade and nobody can find any shade, and I just want to sit still and try to keep cool, that's all. Just sit in my own front porch and keep cool. Why can't I do it? Why? Why? I give up. <laughs> Jughead, be quiet. Okay, okay. I have never in all my days seen anything like this. First, no ice. Then Archie goes to borrow some ice, but we drop the ice and it melts. Then Jughead goes home to get a fan that doesn't work. Then Archie turns on the hose that soaks Mr. Sherry. Then Jughead strings wire all over the porch so I can trip over it. <laughs> Boy, did you look funny when you... <laughs> Jughead! <laughs> okay, okay. Fred, there's no need to shout so. You're just getting hotter, dear. Oh, uh, Mary, wouldn't you shout if these things happened to you? Well, I know, but, but you... I am through shouting, and I am through getting hotter. And things are going to be done my way starting right now, you hear? Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Andrew. Yes, dear. Yes, dear, Dad. Well, all right. Now, Jughead, you take that fan home right now. Yes, you hear me? Yes, Mr. Andrew. Yeah, Dodgy, you take this bucket inside the house. Yes, Dad. And Betty... Please take your sprinkler and holes back home. Yes, Mr. Andrews. And I am just going to sit here quietly, and that's final. But, Fred, you can't do that. And why not? Because I just spoke to the doctor and told him you sprained your back. And? And he said you better get right down to his office and you'll be good as new as soon as he gives you a couple hours of heat treatment. Heat treatment? Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! It's later that afternoon. We find Mr. Andrews just coming home from his heat treatment at the doctor's office. How's your back feel? Oh, Archie, my back is fine now, but I have never been so hot and tired in all my life. Mary, if you've got that refrigerator going, please make me a cold lemonade now. All right, dear, I will right away. Oh, dear. Oh, what is it? I turned the refrigerator on, but I forgot to put any water in the trays. There isn't a drop of ice in the house. Oh, no. The idyllic uh, image presented to us of Riverdale. That lovable teenager, Archibald Andrews, and his ragtag team of friends. Why, I don't have a care in the world. So transfixed am I by what I just heard, I'm not even paying attention to a single thing around me. There could be a whole war going on out there, and I wouldn't know. Uh, Jake, I think that's our uh, cue to maybe, maybe get out of here. Right, right. I don't think it's going to get it any easier than this. I don't think so. I... I think that if I ever met Archibald, he and I would be good friends. Right, I got the key out of his pocket. Come on. Okay, okay. Which, which, wait, which key is it? Uh... Why does he have so many keys? I don't know. And don't forget about the tense but hilarious relationship he shares with his father. Oh, this one, this one. All right, I got the key. Go on, no. All right, all right, we're home yes, We're out of here. Oh, boy. Oh, hey, guys. Uh, where are you going? Oh, hey, Mondo. Um, we, uh, Hey, Mondo. We were just going out the door. Uh, we were thinking of maybe just going home. Yeah, just sort of leaving. If you could step aside. 
<laughs> oh, no can do me, little friends. <laughs> the, the producer over there, he, he is uh, assigned me to keep you guys in the studio until he gives uh, the signal. So, sorry about that. Mondo, we hired you. Oh, yeah, but he gave me a cheese sandwich, and, and the loyalty is, is pretty easily purchased, so what can you do? I, I, I just feel a little betrayed here, Mondo. I... Yeah, I mean, we kind of we kind of thought you were our friends. <laughs> Friendships is easily tested when food is involved. Well, that's enough musing on the uh, Archibald Andrews for one day. If I remain in my blissful ignorance, my life will fall apart. Much like it did during my third divorce. That was one of the worst ones. Anyway, what in the Samuel's going on around here? Where did those two jokers get to? Oh, they're over here, they're over here. We caught them trying to get out the door. You Benedict Arnold. Traitor. I had a feeling something like this would happen with you two losers. And mutiny is punishable by death. Oh, jeez, that, that's, that's going way too far, man. Mutiny? Hey, hey, I'm a kind man. And a man who wants to see you suffer. So what I'm gonna do is put my best man on this case. I'm going to put someone in that room with you who I know will not only drive you crazy, but will make sure you don't leave. And that man is right here. Howdy ho! Sydney, he didn't get to you too! Yeah, I'm sorry about this, guys, but uh, it turns out he invested all the money for the show and my baseball career, and then when I bailed him the contract, well, um, he's kind of got me over a barrel. I have to do his bidding now. Sydney, I told you not to tell anybody that. Wait a minute, you're locking this in here because you put all the money for the show on Sydney's baseball career? That kind of just sounds like the consequences of your own actions. Listen, John, Mike, we all make mistakes in the heat of the moment. Heat of the moment? You've had us locked in here for the last hour. It's only been an hour. This is more mentally fatiguing than I thought it would be. Better let you and Sydney get to it then. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? I thought you were going to stay in here with us. I was only here for the Archibald, and I'm not staying in here with that clan. We took in Sydney and Mondo off the streets, and they do this to repay us. Yeah, you took them in and now you can have them. I have been stabbed in the back so many times today. Well, Jimbo, it's a dog-eat-dog world. And speaking of eating dogs, I thought there was a uh, nice-looking wiener schnitzel stand down the street there. I'm gonna go get myself a bite to eat. Uh, you boys take care, huh? Well, guess we're stuck here for the week. Sydney, I'm gonna cannibalize you. Oh, <laughs> is that like caramelizing? We love caramel. No, Mondo, that's not like that at all. Well, folks, thanks for listening to Yesterday Today. We're in a bit of a fix here, but uh, we'll we'll see what we can do by the time next week rolls around. If you want to hear more of the show, you can go to KISU.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, tune in next week as, uh, well, we might be dead by then. Or at least Sydney might be. It's uh, it's hard to tell, you know. It's a long way off. Yeah, I'm I'm actually quite concerned by the fact there is no food in here at all, none. Oh, contraire! I always carry a box of stale donuts with me wherever I go. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. jelly filled, jelly filled. <laughs> <laughs>